What's up my friends and family? How are you today? And welcome back to my channel. <clears throat> sorry, sorry. <clears throat> so today I wanted to get into something um, that I get a lot of questions on, not from just YouTube, from people in general, like how do you survive running the store? Do you make any money? Is it worth it? Was it worth the initial investment? So I want to fill you guys in on exactly what it took, what it takes, and how much um, I make a year owning this convenience store. It's not going to be the same for every convenience store. Some are busier, some are smaller. Some will make less, some will make more. Some sell cigarettes and their sales might be higher, but the profit on cigarettes is very, very little. Profit on gas is very, very little. So, yeah, let's get into all that. Um, if you're new here, uh, my wife and I have owned this convenience slash grocery store for about two years now. Um, it's been going well. Of course, there's always setbacks and always wins and losses. Um, but yeah, we uh, entered the life of um, being entrepreneurs. Uh, we both left pretty good jobs. Felicia still works um, part-time at hers because the store you know, has another part-timer that helps us out as well. So yeah, if you do like all that and you want to support this small business, please hit the thumbs up button, subscribe down below. We are constantly building and growing this channel as well as the small business. If you ever had a curiosity on you know what it takes and how much it actually costs to open up a retail store, well, follow along this channel. Uh, we're learning with you every single day. I hope you enjoy this video. Let's get right into it. So, how much you make is going to be dependent on so many factors. Your amount of inventory, you know, the amount of space you have, your location, how many employees you have to pay, how much your rent is. But for my situation, for this video, just to give you a general idea, this store is about 1,600 square feet. We've been open two years. We have one part-time employee and um, our income that we make. I, you know, I don't mind telling you my income. Our income that we make is based on two people. So what I make, Felicia makes as well. So yeah, don't uh, think that uh, anybody's getting rich. Don't think anyone's, you know, super poor when they own a convenience store because it is basically like a, a job that you've invested in. I go, I went more the boutique route. There's gonna be convenience stores that are completely different than this that sell, you know, a lot of, uh, you know, chocolate bars, chips, and things like that. I do a lot of fresh produce, bread, dairy, um, vegan items, keto items. I'm trying to stay on top of the trends, so we have a lot of like chicken wraps, things like that, you know, kombucha. Uh, that's my route, that's what I build. So it's more of a grocery slash boutique slash convenience store. And at the end of the day, it's all convenience because people shop in these small stores for convenience. So it is a convenience store at the end of the day. And the sooner you realize that, probably the better. Um, but yeah, so this is my experience and how much I personally make as a convenience store owner. So for example, the last clip you saw, I believe there was something else here. We just purchased this new shelf. It has a bunch of bread and like crackers and crisps and you know, our own breadcrumbs, things like that. So what I mean by you're always reinvesting and trying to make things better to give you better turnover on your products. This is a perfect example. And then we also added this today. Um, it's gonna be all like jarred olives, mushrooms, what else? Roasted peppers. Um, ignore that popcorn, that's gotta move. That doesn't fit with the shelf here. Artichokes, you know, a lot of appetizer things that you put on a, like a, charcuterie. a charcuterie board or something like that. Just with the customer right now, so I don't want to start talking yet. It's kind of weird. So we're constantly reinvesting, and you know, we're constantly building. We're thinking of the long term. You know, we could have stayed the exact same as we started with, you know, minimal inventory, maybe seven, eight grand of inventory, and just you know, maybe taking a better um, salary from the start. Um, however. You know, we realize, you know, if we're going to do this, really give it a go, really make it a long-term thing, 
we might as well reinvest everything we make for the first year and just keep building. And it took me about almost a year and a half before I started taking any money out of this business, any salary at all. Because basically you have to see if this place is even feasible, if this is even something that can work um, until you see your first year's profit, if there is any profit, right? Some places don't make any money for two, three, four years, right? Fortunately enough, we were allowed, we were, we were breaking even after our first year, maybe even a little bit better than breaking even. And during our second year, we started taking some money, you know, um, nothing crazy and nothing that uh, would hurt the business if we took it out because a lot of our profits get reinvested as much as possible into building this thing to be better, bigger, and more profitable for the future. For one day, possibly an expansion or an exit, we don't really know that 100% yet, but we do know that um, the only wise thing is to keep the, bringing in inventory, making the place look better, bringing better inventory, better equipment, and uh, just making this place the best space it can be. So, you know, things like these coolers and shelves and things like that are things we keep upgrading to either, you know, get better efficiency out of them, less on our hydro bill, or essentially make them um, open merchandisers is our next step because people tend to buy um, with their eyes. So if I can see a product that looks good right in front of me, even opening a door can somehow hinder your sales when... Uh, between an open merchandiser and a closed door merchandiser. So things like produce, you know, they should be out in an open merchandiser, which is just a cooler without doors if I'm, you know, um, breaking it down for you guys. And to be honest, uh, we only did that to save money as we started. Eventually we do want to get open air coolers um, to pump up more uh, produce and just sell bigger volumes of the things. So it's another investment that we have to make to make more money into the future. Well, that's basically what this business is and many other businesses. You know, you have to really spend more money to keep making more money, to spend money to make more money. And eventually, you know, it reaches a point where it, I don't, you can't make the place any better or expand anymore um, unless you're in another location or you move into a bigger location. So. We're not there yet. I, I can tell you we're getting there. We, this place is over, overflowing with things. Um, so Felicia's filling this uh, aisle here. This is basically all of our snacks. All of our snacks go down this aisle. This cooler here is um, our keto snacks, our vegan snacks, vegan cheeses. Um, this probably should be moved because it's not really part of like snacks and confectionery. But for now, it, it's new and it attracts attention because it's up front. So um, the margins are great on all this stuff in here. But yeah, this store has a lot of snacks. And I don't know if that's because people just like snacks in this area, but they do sell well. Um, but yeah, and the, the life on them is long enough where, you know, we don't have to worry about anything expiring. So it's just a good um, addition to our main uh, our main items such as produce and grocery items. So that's just an example. You really have to figure out what your customer wants in any business, especially this one where you're dealing with food um, because people are very, very particular with what they like and what they don't like. So you wanna figure out what moves the best and moves the quickest so you have more turnover, which leads to better sales, which leads to, well, your better um, salary for the year. You know, I haven't really ever bought groceries in the last two years. Rome wasn't built in a day. Patience is going to be key in this type of business, in any business really. You know, you're going to start by making nothing, then maybe your second year, 30 to 40 hopefully, and then hopefully you can keep growing from there. That's my overall game plan. You know, I can't say that right off the bat, you know, we were killing it and making money. That's very, very rare. Now, I just want you to understand that how rare that is is because I'm just telling you this place is quite busy for the size that it is I know there's when I shoot these videos you know there's not too many people flowing around me 
but I only shoot these videos when it is a dead day and you will have dead days um, for some reason that always happens during the week we get one completely dead day and the other days are busy so that's the day I choose to film I can tell right away at 11 o'clock if we're at a certain number I just somehow know that it's going to be a dead day and I'm usually right about that and it's frustrating because I don't want to be right about that and here we are making this video which I need to make these videos anyway so it helps that I have a dead day I'd rather not have a dead day and uh, and be able to still film these somehow but I probably wouldn't if it was a dead day yeah so and mind you that January and February are going to be the slowest months out of the year by far so that helps make more videos like I can make more videos I have more time but just don't you know don't feel bad don't think it's your business January and February in retail and any business that requires someone to pay money is gonna have probably the slowest days in January and February besides a gym maybe because everyone's on the new health kicks in January so they'll be very busy but in general retail January February I'm telling you you know buckle down have some savings because it's gonna be a nice ride out of those two months fortunately and fortunately my salary is not based on how many hours I have to spend here how many hours I uh, take you know buying inventory sourcing inventory finding new things my salary is based on how well this store performs day to day and um, you know it's very very different than what I'm used to get just getting paid by the hour because even when it was slow it didn't matter you know even when I was doing nothing at another workplace it didn't matter I was still getting paid I was still getting the same amount each week and this has uh, been very different because you know if no one's coming in and no one's buying anything well you're not making any money but you still have to pay the rent the hydro if you have employees that's what makes this um, hard to determine the salary of each um, store very very similar to this right because everything is so different people are you know spend more in certain stores people spend less in other stores so you know you really have to factor in a lot of different things but from my experience I can tell you that I currently make around 40000 a year with this store. Um, there's a lot of benefits that I have that I would never have if I was an employee um, uh, for someone else. So that 40000 that I'm currently making is, um, let's just say that it's um, flexible. You know, if we're having a better month, I'll take a little bit more. If we're having a slower month, I'll take a little bit less. So that's fine. At the end of the year, it's around that. And it's only our second year. So I'm hoping at the fifth year, you know, we're at maybe 60. I mean, this place, you know, it only can produce so much um, in its first five years. And at this size, I can't, ex it's a lot to expect this place to make me more than I was making, uh, at a, you know, as a teacher. But you know that's fine you know there's a lot of flexibility here we have a lot of tax benefits um, our cars are you know the car that we own is a lot of its expenses are written off through the business we have a lot of free food here you know a lot of grocery anything that is about to expire or even if we just want to try it we through the store we live kind of through the store's food trying to keep the place clean you know uh, see this is the office of a uh, retail store owner okay look how lavish it is but you know at the end of this you know it's not only about the money you really have to enjoy what you're doing each and every day you know you can make 40 50 60 70 100 thousand a year you really need to enjoy each day that you have working I mean what's really the point of doing something that I mean you're gonna spend 60 hours doing it a week minimum and to make forty thousand dollars with it's really not much better than minimum wage to be honest you're looking at the future you're looking at the long-term kind of self-fulfillment you'll get by owning your own business being able to build it everything you know that comes with uh, the pride of uh, having something that's your own and being your own boss and all those benefits that come with that 
you know you have to kind of figure out that of course you can make more money doing something else especially if you're qualified in something else but if you really want to build something from the ground up I suggest this is a nice way to do it the self fulfillment that you that comes with it just making people happy every day you know giving them products they want giving them products they can't find anywhere else that's another bonus as well you know this isn't a place to get rich this is a stepping stone for me I think the next move with the amount of money that we're going to be hopefully making within the end of this year I'm hoping we can invest into something else maybe another similar business maybe another location possibly some investment properties the the sky's the limit when it comes to being an entrepreneur and that's why I love it however there's going to be times that are going to be harder than anything you've ever done before and that's exactly where I'm at now this is by far the hardest thing I've ever done being patient enough to let this thing grow is a challenge I struggle with every every day because when you're not you know when you're not busy you always kind of feel shitty and that doesn't really go away until you have another busy day so you're happy when you're busy and you're happy when you're not happy when it's when it's not busy and that's something we really have to learn how to get over because you don't want to tie your personal well-being into the sales of a business so yes you'll be starting from the bottom you'll be starting from zero you'll be starting from 20 30 40 like our situation and hopefully it goes up from there you know your store can only get better and probably more popular unless some sort of you know economic crisis or catastrophe happens or you know you completely make some huge mistakes so I, I think it's onwards and upwards so if you have anything that you'd like to share and give me uh, some of your advice I'd love to hear it comment down below and that's it for me I'm gonna start closing up this place and cleaning up and uh, another another day another day in February you know not bad not good but we're staying positive. As someone told me today, I think they saw me in a bad mood, this old lady. Everything's okay. Tomorrow's another day. I was okay with that. You know, that kind of brightened up my mood. So, cheers, guys. Thank you.